Terra has just put forward a plan to save its cryptocurrency Luna and its stablecoin UST on the 27th of May. Find out what that plan is and its impact on the crypto markets in this video. Roll the intro. Hello and welcome to the World Series of Trading, the only place where you can make real money trading virtual funds. My name is Ron and I'm a pro trader on the platform. I've been trading for over seven years and I'm here to bring you expert market analysis. But before we get into it, I need to remind you that none of these videos constitute as financial advice or advice of any kind to take any position in any financial instrument. But without further ado, let's get into it. Hello, play traders and welcome to this market analysis for the 20th of May 2022. Now, this is an update on the whole Terra Luna situation and an update on what's going on with Bitcoin as a result of the significant drop we got last week. So, Terra Luna, what's going on? Is it trading above $1 as I hoped when I bought into it? Unfortunately not. Me and my Terra Luna tokens are probably going to stay at, what, five cents? You know, so, Terra Luna is currently trading at 0.0001 cents, I think. I hope at least, you know, maybe I can salvage something. But that's where Terra Luna is trading. Um, is it going to jump above um, $1 someday? I strongly doubt that because in order for that to happen, the market capitalization of Terra Luna would have to hit well a higher market capitalization than bitcoin is at right now because you know right now they've just stopped the um, minting of new terra luna tokens well they stopped it quite a while ago and they're currently sitting on a supply of six million terra tokens right sorry six million luna that is six trillion luna that's how much exists right and for it to reach one dollar that means it would have to have um what six trillion dollars um well six trillion dollars which is larger than the entire crypto space right so that's not going to happen unfortunately but there is a bit of a silver lining so what happened was do kwan who's the founder of luna actually decided that he was going to come up with a rescue plan and this is it they're currently voting on it and for the moment it looks like they're going forward with the rescue plan so the rescue plan is this they want to um, essentially fork the network right and forking the network essentially creates two different tokens so the token that we currently have is um luna right that's going to go its separate way and there's going to be another is there's going to be another new token right now I'm guessing what's going to happen is this one's going to be called Luna and this one's going to be called Luna Classic because they did mention that uh, they're going to call this one Luna Classic from now, uh, from now on. So the one that I'm currently holding is called Luna Classic, right? And the other one's going to be called Luna, right? Now, everyone who holds Luna at the moment will essentially get a Luna Classic token and they'll hold on to the original Luna, right? That's what happens when a, when there's a fork, um, which is essentially what happened with the whole Bitcoin and Bitcoin Classic thing. And um, Ethereum also had its own hard fork. So that's what happened. And um, is this new Luna token going to go to $100 and you know, have a large market capitalization? I strongly doubt that because people have lost confidence in this project. So unlikely that we'll have any significant market cap. So unfortunately, I'm out of luck. However, there is some good news within the crypto space and that good news is around Bitcoin. And I'm gonna just share my screen so that you can see the chart of Bitcoin as well. Um, and this is an opportunity that we can all take advantage of within the crypto, um, within the crypto tournaments, um, that WSOT offers. So Bitcoin, what's going on? There we go. Right. There's a chart of Bitcoin. Isn't that beautiful? 
Um, we've somewhat gotten out of uh, the woods in terms of the declines that we've had over the past, uh, what is it, over the past month. So Bitcoin is now trading sideways. Huge relief, right? So right now, what levels are we looking at? We're looking at this level right here. Um, but it's it's essentially, um, it's not a strong level of um, resistance, if you ask me. This is definitely a house made of straw at this moment in time. And right down there is our house made of straw as well in terms of the support level. So this is what we're trading. This is the range we're trading in with Bitcoin, right? But do we break out of this range and then go on to form higher highs and higher lows? Because from what you can see here, we've got a low, a higher low, higher low, right? So this you can already see is in an upward trend. But is this upward trend going to be sustainable is the real question. And the general sense I get is probably not. We're probably going to be trading sideways for quite a bit because I believe we've found some kind of fair value over here. Because what are the characteristics of fair value? You, fair, fair value um, is essentially when you're trading sideways because there's an equal balance between buyers and sellers, right? So over here, generally what happens when, you, when the market's looking for fair value and trying to price in a certain fundamental catalyst, you have this huge capitulation down and essentially it's an overshoot to the downside. And then you start trading this sort of sideways range, which is exactly what we got. So we've been trading within this sideways range um, and I guess the only thing that, the one thing that holds all the cards in terms of whether or not we break out of here is how the S&P closes, uh, S&P 500 closes tonight, okay? Why are we talking about the S&P 500 when we're talking about Bitcoin? What does the S&P 500 have to do with Bitcoin? Well, Bitcoin is a risk asset. The S&P 500 is the granddaddy of risk assets. So whatever the whatever the S&P 500 does is essentially what Bitcoin will do because Bitcoin is essentially is just a leveraged um, bet on risk assets, if you want to call it that. So what's going on with the S&P 500? We seem to have found support and it seems to be a very strong level of support. I wouldn't, I'd definitely call this a strong level of support. So I'm going to use my bold line over here, right? This is now a house made of bricks and mortar, right? So now this level of support, I think will hold, I think the S&P 500's fair value is somewhere between this 3860 level and 3140, right? So that's where fair value is for the S&P 500. So what I think is going to happen over the next few weeks is we're probably going to be trading sideways. So if the S&P 500 is going sideways, Bitcoin is likely to go sideways as well. So I'd be looking to sell over here, buy over here. Very simple. The closer we are to the top of the range, the uh, more aggressive you get in terms of selling. The closer you are to the bottom, you get the picture. But for you crypto weekenders out there, this is exactly what you should be looking to take advantage of. So aggressive selling up here and aggressive buying down here. But you also need to take into consideration that the S&P 500 might just fly in today's session, which could drive us above this level. But in the crypto weekend the tournament, do we get below 28,000 on Bitcoin? Well, 29,000 on Bitcoin, I doubt it. So those are the moves you wanna watch. But other than that, I'll see you in the next one. Now, if you like this video, please smash the like button below and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content just like it. And if you'd like to join in on the fun, we have a trading competition running right now. By the way, the prize pool for 2022 is well over a million dollars. So you do not want to miss out on the action. First link in the description if you want to join in on one of the trading competitions. But other than that, I'll see you in the next one.